let's pull you on in. We got a lot of stuff we'd like to cover for you today, which is really all about reinforcing uh, things that'll help you with completing assignment two. We're going to talk about oh phasing a little bit more. We're going to talk about design options a little bit more. Kind of really give you a, a handle on how to control those things and start feeling confident about using them. We're also going to talk about something new today. We're going to talk about area plans and room space planning. So how you can go ahead and start computing areas and tracking areas in a way that's just more efficient than doing it on a room by room basis. Where in the last assignment, a lot of you figured out that oh the amount of area that you were losing between the wall surfaces was actually pretty significant. So you had a pretty inaccurate estimate of the total area you're building. We'll talk about how you do that a little more accurately, uh, including all those spaces. To get you started over the next couple sessions, I actually sent out an email message this morning pointing you to some resources that are available. So I want to let you know they're out there because there's really a whole lot more available to you than just what's going on in the class here. So. What I pointed out in the email was that really, in addition to the classes that we're doing this year, like all the classes from last year are actually out there too. So if you want to get a little head start on doing renderings or working with uh, interiors and shadows or just even area and space planning, we did that in session 13 last year. Like some of those things are available. You can go out there and watch the videos there and kind of get a handle on how we had the, did it last year. Um, you'll find the example. It's pretty much the same example that we did for that we're doing for assignment two we did last year also. So these will look very familiar to you if you want to go back there. Now, looking at it that way is okay. However, I never advocate listening. You know, it's it's okay to listen to the whole class again, but there's a lot of stuff in the class that you know you may not want to listen to the entire thing. So I want to let you know about it in another resource, which is really a very good one, and that is this thing over here called the Autodesk BIM curriculum. And what you need to know about that is that is a project we worked on last year to really take this class and distill it down to a series of online lessons that are distributed to universities like all over the world to kind of look at this. So we really, I worked with a group of the students who were in CE210 two years ago to go ahead and take the class and really break it down into a series of individual lessons. And within that, you'll actually find, again, some of the things that we're working on in the class. So. There's a lesson on area and space planning. There's a lesson on design options. There's one on project phasing. Up here in the first unit, there's some lessons on materials and visualization, things like that. And the nice thing about going to that resource is, for example, if you go there, you'll find some suggested exercises. Okay. We're in phase new construction. We're working on, well, it's, it's a little university building where we're building a second building right next to the first one. And in all that, you'll find, the nice part here is, you'll find four minutes of Laura's very pleasing voice walking you through the highlights of the features of what you need to know about, as opposed to a half hour of me droning on about it. <laughs> okay, so these little videos are really much crisper. Four classic projects that are so large and complex they require finer ways of organizing, sorting, filtering, and deciding what information to present. First, Let me click on ahead. Report. Every object and every view in the model is associated with phases through its phase properties. As you will see later, every object is created in a certain phase and demolished in a certain phase. It is with these predictive variables that we control when things appear or disappear in views. First, we're going to duplicate views in order to create separate versions in each view, each with a different okay, so that is needed at any point. What I want to point out about that is it's really, it is pretty much the same stuff we've done in class, just sort of distilled down to five minute segments. Okay, so great place to go ahead and if something went by too quickly, go back and see if you can get it through the highlights there. And it really is, it's tightly edited, but what goes on in class here is a little loose sometimes. <laughs> okay, so. Take advantage of those resources. They're really, really good, and they're out there and available to you. So please uh, just jump in there and use some of that. Okay, uh, let's talk just real briefly about assignment two. Has yeah, have people had a chance to sort of open it up and take a look, at least in terms of the file and what's going on there? We're we're going to work with that file and kind of work with some of the uh, the features of it as we keep on going today. But uh, just you know, you know, for the next. Three sessions, it's really all about helping you get through that like assignment. So feel free to jump in with anything that's specific to your, your design and ask a question about it. And chances are your question will be generalizable to something that a lot of other people are struggling with too. So uh, yeah, make that really interactive that way.